Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are doing Saitama from One Punch Man. So, without further ado, let's kick into it. Let's first get our shapes. We need a sphere, we need a few squares, and some cylinders. So let's just go here. Polygon primitives, sphere, polygon primitives, cylinder, and then let's keep going here. And let's get ourselves a cube. If you notice something different about my um, spheres, it is something I did do recently. I put less variables into it if I can find where the heck I put them. I think I need to bring back another sphere. Something must have happened. There we go. Let's start by always making these Lambert 1. This week we'll actually be having four parts for this video. I will explain this later on in the video. So without further ado, let's keep going with what we were trying to do here. We are just going to make all these Lambert. And then let's get into it. Let's start with the head, which is probably the more easier part. Let's just do this. Oh, found it. It fused with the thing. We already have another sphere, so we really don't need that. I'm just, let's just do what we do for most videos, make a copy, and let's start. Let's start off with the head, which is probably going to be the easiest part. It's probably the most simple part. All we really need is a sphere. We just really need the size of this to what we want. So if you're wondering what... I mentioned about part four. Part four will be basically us making the shape look a lot more cleaner. We're trying to, you know, make it look like it belongs as a model. So we're gonna take that idea and we're gonna do that Friday, since we don't have any videos Friday. The eyes are gonna be a tricky part. This will be part of part four, for example. For part four, we'll be like extruding or add more divisions to extrude parts to make eyes. So let's, you know, why don't we just test to see if we add divisions now? It'll look like this. So that's that's really what we're gonna have. So let's just do that from here. So this is gonna be Saitama's head. If you're wondering what I'm looking at, this is just how it happens at the beginning. We'll get to the rest of it later. Let's go on with the cape. This is why I have a cube. This cape is honestly a more interesting part of any model we've done before because it's a part of a model that is flowing backwards on a very interesting angle. So what we're going to start with is rotating this cube and trying to you know, hit somewhat of like an upwards angle like so. We're going to make it kind of thin, like extremely thin like that. We're not using a plane because a plane would honestly be a lot harder to high poly. It would be a lot better if we you know, use just a regular cube. Next step, we're just going to bring this down here. And just make it a lot bigger from width and height. Let's keep going with that. The thing is, this model might actually be more of an interesting thing that we're going to do. Why? It's because it has a very completely different perspective. If you're noticing that this cape isn't fully going all the way, this is going to be totally normal. We're going to, you know, extrude parts on the side later on. Let's next do that. Next, next, let's do the neck. Let's take one of our cylinders and use that as the neck. If you're already a concurrent viewer, you'll understand that this never looks right at the beginning. Also, guys, I've been looking at my channel, and I noticed a lot of you watching are not subscribed. You know, it's not that difficult. Just hit the subscribe button. It would be great if you guys, you know, got me, on, got me on some subscribers. Let's get on with the next. This next part will honestly be a lot harder to do, considering if you look at the model, the cape and the neck are kind of connected, so it's kind of going to look like that. Next, let's do, honestly, let's start with a hand. The hand's probably going to be one of the more different parts. This is going to be actually a lot harder to model because not all the shapes are so easily defined. So we're going to just try to figure out how to hit the hand. What we're really going to do is just use a bunch of cylinders because you can see how 
his fingers are kind of like that. What is going to really be the difference is how we're going to, you know, make them less defined. We're going to, you know, render them less and probably make a bigger difference out of that. So let's get into that part. We'll shrink this down, make it taller, and make it slimmer. This is how we're going to hit our margins on the model. Next, you can see how there's kind of like that rotate. We're just going to rotate this like that and shrink it. You can see how in some of the more perspective items, you can see how they get smaller and smaller. That's what we're going to hit now next. We're going to make another cylinder out of this, but instead make this slightly smaller. This is something that's going to change out in a lot of the, these parts. This one's actually the same size, we're just going to keep that. That. The knuckles are going to, we're going to do that something interesting. Considering this part will be, you know, our final finger, it's going to be the smallest. So what we're going to do is grab one of these and make them extremely tiny. Allowing you to just simply move it in. And there we go. What we're going to do for the knuckles is mostly just take a sphere, considering the knuckles don't really need the most high poly. What's going to be what our main thing is, if it needs the most high poly, it's better to use a cube. This is why I've been using cubes for stuff like the cape. Sometimes I use them for eyes because they're a lot easier and better for high poly. You can see that thumb, yes, what we're going to do is move these down more. And make them a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. Let's actually come out of transparency mode for a second for this part. Let's actually move this. Nope. Let's move this down and move also move this down. This is so that we can have, you know, some way to model that back finger. And let's move this outward and then shrink it. This is going to be kind of like the knuckle upside down that we have here. So then, next step, we are going to just make this bigger. And that's really how we're going to hit it. There's really no other way we can really slice it right now. So this is going to be the knuckle right here. While we're here, let's just do the same thing. Control D and move another one here. If you're already a concurrent viewer, you'll understand why these look more blocky. It's because I took out some of the divisions so that it's a lot easier to use. There we go. Let's go back into transparency mode, and this finger we need to address. This is going to be a lot harder to do. You notice that why the hand is a lot bigger? It's because of how the perspective is taken. This is something with a lot of models that we've done. There's always this very weird perspective that the artist might have taken. So that's what we're trying to, you know, get our hands on. This kind of very giant perspective. I'm just going to be going like this. And then for that finger, what we're really going to do is just rotate and make this a lot smaller. If you can notice, we do have those parts. So to counterbalance that, we're going to put this above the knuckle pieces. Just like that. Let's actually make these a lot thicker. And we kind of have what we're looking for here. It's a lot messy, yes, this is the low poly version where there's like not a lot of builds coming off it. You can see that tiny area, this is going to be a lot easier, so we're just going to fill that in with another cylinder. There's a lot of cylinders that go into this guy's hand, I am extremely confused why this guy has so many cylinders for hands. And that's going to be his hand. This looks a lot worse than that. Let's actually take a cube for this next part. So let's get take that part. That's gonna be that like glove that he has on. I'm just gonna make this larger. Pretty much just shrink it. What we're gonna do firsthand is rotate this back to its original origin. So we're gonna do rotate it. Just like that. 
move this inward and get to this part we have, which is how big is Saitama's glove. What we're gonna aim for is mostly how it's gonna connect, but right now I think this is okay for the glove. We might make it a little more bigger, like just maybe a little wider. Actually, let's make it a little wider and then put it on an angle. That's what we're gonna do right here. And move this. And we'll look at the rest of it once it's done. Next is these tons of muscles that are in Titanus' shoulder. Now, these are gonna come as what we're gonna do for the rest of the high poly. This is something that comes within the high poly. You can see how more detail is brought in. What we're really going to do is just take a cube. You might think this should have been a cylinder solution. It really... You could use a cylinder, but it would be a lot more difficult to high poly. We are thinking of how are we going to, you know, take this model upwards to the next level. How are we going to, you know, change the model? So I think what we should really do is focus on that. The final part of this model, as we're going to take it for part one, is that chest. Again, same idea with the cube. And what we're gonna do, move it here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the beginning model of Saitama. This doesn't look so great, I understand, but we will get more into that part two. Part two will be coming out soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, sub, and comment down below what I should, what I should do next week. Same too for part two. I love you guys, and bye.